This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 617 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professional wrestling here. Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, ready to have some fun here. And a little bit of a musical episode here, of course. With me in studio is Larry, Mutilator Larry, joining us. Hi. As How usual. You Full of tacos and mirth and tacos donuts and that in the shape of Yoda's head, apparently. Oh, it was great. It was like I found a Jesus burrito. Or it's, <laughs> it's like a Star Wars Jesus burrito. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Sounds delicious. And with <laughs> us, we got a hell of a crew because I think this is the first time we've had an entire musical act with us on the Mayhem Got Show. <laughs> uh, we yeah. have with us a, the entire Max Out band on the line with us today. How you doing, guys? Oh, we're doing good. 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 Thanks for having us. Uh, can you, there's a lot of voices here. Four of you, of course. Can you please introduce yourself so everybody can put a name to the voice? I am Nate. I play bass. I am Stash. I'm the guy behind the sixth string. I am Tommy D, and I play drums. Elliot, vocals. There you go. <laughs> and if you're familiar, lead hair. Hair. <laughs> hair. There's a lot more of you since last time I got to uh, uh, see you guys. Of course, around the uh, the Virgil, the Cafe vi- uh, video with Virgil, it was, it, that, which was an interesting experience that I know we talked about over on Indie Mayhem Show a while ago. Uh, and, uh, of course, you guys are going to be part of the Millville Music Festival here in a week. But we'll get to that in a moment. But in the meantime, everybody, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thanks to another music act this local here, Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for the intro music. Uh, please drop us a line at the email address. Good times. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm sorry, good times at SorgatronMedia.com or that phone number 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Facebook us, Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, of course, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music Podcasts, as well as the video versions on YouTube and Facebook. And you can join us here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Facebook page. And also, please go check out the Twitch page for one wrestling.us has a lot of fun stuff. And this show is actually starting to be rebroadcast over on the Sorgatron Media Twitch stream. And thanks to our other streaming partner, the 405 Media out there on the west coast that's taking us uh that's uh that's uh re- rebroadcasting us every night seven days a week at 9 p.m pacific time um midnight eastern time you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem and thanks to our patreon supporters patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show thank you so much you're literally helping us uh keep the lights on here in the studio at the fan of the show dollar level our friend bo diggity Woo! 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 as well as yeah Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. And uh, with a shout out to um, Matt Carlin's and RIP his appendix. Uh, he's going to come back 110% and, uh, and, and, and really spread some mayhem here. Uh, when that gets taken care of. I heard he already hijacked an ambulance and he's hij- on his way. He hijacked an ambulance. I hear he's on his way to the studio right now, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, our friends at the Pocky Club, $5 level, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Heel Bradley on the Twitter, and Adak Remedy, the old schooler. Those guys are going to get some uh, uh, Mayhem Show gold where we booked Raw to the tune of Infinity War. Um, it's spoiler alert for Infinity War if you listen to that episode. So look for that here in the uh, Patreon stream here in the next uh, 24 hours. Also, thanks to our $10 Pizza Club level. You guys got a state of the show this week. Billy Johnson and J.D. Jones. Again, you guys can contribute as well at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. We got all kinds of uh, special stuff for you guys and some more hopefully on the way very, very soon. So we got Max out with us. And uh, Max out... <laughs> I'm just gonna refer you all as the band name. Hello, Max Out. You're the singular four-person entity. Uh, <laughs> hey, that works. 
That's so, fine. Like I said, we uh, most people know you. We've t- we, we talk about uh, several times on the show because I I, 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 I I usually have fond. Okay, I, I usually have memories of directing uh, Virgil to drum that one time, for instance. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and let's say you, you guys definitely have more of a band since I, I last spoke with you guys. Um, uh, it's, uh, first tell everybody like what, what, do, what do people expect from Max out? Well, the best looking like... band in Pittsburgh, man. That's what they're looking for. <laughs> the most fanciful, best looking guys in town, all getting on stage. Um, showing a lot of skin, showing the arm muscles. <laughs> Um, I mean, Elliot's in ketosis right muscles. now. That's how serious yeah. he is about this. <laughs> I haven't eaten a carb in, you know, 12 Four days. Hours. No carb. Zero. <laughs> Not a single one. I'm sorry for your loss. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about right here. We're talking about some handsome guys right now. And he does that. For the Max Out fans. He doesn't eat carbs for you. It's not for him. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not about me. It's about the fans. That's why I do it. <laughs> the sacrifices I make for this art, nobody understands. No. Nope. Nobody. Nobody except the Max Out fan base. <laughs> and because of that, this is a sacrifice that Elliot Pollock makes. For you guys out there, so you appreciate it. He only eats steaks and he only drinks whiskey straight. Yeah. He does it for you. <laughs> you can say you guys are a, a lifestyle act. Uh, <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> oh, we're showing a little bit here. Uh, of course, you know, like I said, I first got to know you guys around the uh, the cafe video with uh, with Virgil involved as well. Uh, are you guys still getting a lot of uh, feedback from uh, uh, that project? Every once in a blue moon, uh, the funny thing about that. Is actually we're sitting in the basement where old Virgil was pretending to play drums not that many moons ago. But um in terms of getting feedback for that, the funny thing that happened was Virgil kept on calling me at work <laughs> when I was trying to do my job and he had just talk at me for 20 minutes. So it wasn't like a back and forth conversation. <laughs> I'd be sitting there in a, you know, I work in a law firm to be undisclosed law firm, and I get a phone call. And then, you know, usually I'm on speakerphone because, you know, it keeps my hands free so I can do other things. And then I hear this guy start shouting about Tito Santana and Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior <laughs> in the office. So I can't believe you I, gave I, him I enjoyed phone. that. I, that was a nice, uh, you know. Needless to say, you were a popular guy in the office I, I, that day. It was like sure. right when I started a new job. And they're like, who the hell is this guy? Every time he gets a phone call, it's some guy screaming about professional wrestling from the 80s. <laughs> He's professional wrestling from the age. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, you had you had to give him your number in order to book the thing, right? Because he doesn't have other <laughs> modes of interneting. No, he. Uh, yeah. I think his number is still on my phone right now. I mean, <laughs> I hesitate to even bring this up, but we could probably call him right now. Yeah, oh, don't do don't do should that. we call Virgil? Call him right now. No. <laughs> I don't want to, but I kind of hate through. the idea. No, no. <laughs> Maybe we'll save it for later because he might try to take over the whole thing and tell us about like what he taught Andre the Giant about ordering food at Taco Bell. Like, <laughs> Was we he in the Andre right the now. Giant documentary? No. Oh, Tom no, just saw it. He loved it. It's amazing. Yeah, I haven't and... seen it yet. Well, of course, you guys are you guys are big wrestling fans, obviously, with with something like that, with a KFA video, and and, and even you know ha- having Virgil, you know, know where you live, Stosh. Uh- <laughs> yes, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, that was a mistake. Uh, and he has my work number. But you guys, <laughs> you, you, I'm a fucking idiot. Um, can we swear on this? Yeah, you can swear on this. Yeah, we definitely okay. we definitely have parental advisory on this one. Uh, but you guys have other experiences around wrestling. Uh, you, you guys were telling me beforehand while we were prepping for the show about uh, uh, something about Jake the Snake Roberts. Ah, uh, Tom. We have to have Tom tell this story. It's a great one. Not not huge into wrestling. Not really well informed about it these days. But um, I would say five, seven years ago, my former band, Storm King, were playing a gig in Wheeling, a place called Goodfellas. A bunch of friends from, you know, some Pittsburgh folks, and we would gig down there. They'd gig up there, up here. And uh, he was in a Wheeling Civic Center with some wrestling um, gig going on. And he comes walking in the bar and it's filled up. It was a good show that night. There was like four bands, a lot of people there. And everyone's like, there goes Jake, the snake Roberts. He's like making his presence known. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Nice guy. And he's, you know, 
looking around, he bought all of Storm King's merchandise, every T-shirt. <laughs> he bought three of our CDs. We had, you know, three separate recordings. Bought everything, shots. Everyone's drinking with him. Hell yeah! Getting just crushed. We just got crushed with Jake the Snake, and I'm just like scratching my head. Like I still got to drive home, you know, after this thing, and I'm hanging out with Jake the Snake, and I'm hammered now. And, you know, it was just amazing. Did he even watch you guys play or did you just yeah. straight up buy? Yeah. Okay, I yeah. thought he just bought all your stuff. We were, going on. On we were going on. He stayed for the gig and he, he bought all, you know, bought all of our stuff. It was insane. What I imagine is like he turns around, he leaves the bar and there's this like holes through buildings where he went. <laughs> <laughs> it was lit. It was How lit. did he get here? Just walked in a straight <laughs> line the whole way. He went that super way. Super hammered. He super went that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole new... Uh, Meaning for the DDT too. Since his finisher was the DDT, he just gave he gave everybody in Storm King the DDT that night. <laughs> no, he gave us all his money. Yeah, yeah. That, hey, that's whatever perfect. It, whatever his guarantee Man, was, he yeah. spent he spent it on Storm King merch. <laughs> that's right? that's we awesome. gave him more. We're like, here, take more. That's like, so awesome. So this this yeah. is definitely before the uh, resurrection of Jake Roberts with DDP yoga and all that stuff. Oh yeah, he's yeah. drinking all kinds of hard oh, short. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's substances. He was looking for substances too. Yeah, we'll not talk about that, right? Because he was a st- he was a spectacular guy. Yeah, <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was super cool. <laughs> I kind of want to have just like. By the way, Tom, do you have any crack? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did not have behind any there, crack. behind that, behind that T-shirt over there. Is there a bag of crack I that I can borrow? Have any of my crack with me that night? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I want. 400 Jake the Snake Roberts at every one of our shows. Oh, man, man. he was just on it. He was like, yeah. He's a patron of the arts. Um, Yeah. And I think I think Elliot, you had some some run-ins. I, I I didn't realize you guys came up to uh, of course Meadville. We talk about it every year with the uh, IWC Night of the Superstars. We just saw Ray Mysterio there a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, guys like that and Mark Henry. Uh, uh, but uh, but but you you went to Meadville, and I know you ran into like everybody has a problem with that principal up there. But you 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 have a particular one as well. It sounds like. Well, you know, me and Stars were driving up. I was excited, and you know, what year was it? Who, was what? like. Of course, you know, so this is, this is, uh, you know, about a week before we get this message that says the Hardy Boys, even though the Hardy Boys have signed with WWE, they're still going to be there to go see the Hardy Boys moonsaults. So we, we still plan on going to this show. Me and Stas are in the car and I'm taking down, you know, a bottle of, uh, a bottle of whiskey, some Jägermeister. I'm, and I'm probably like, a bottle in when we get in there and then though that scummy ass promoter is like oh yeah trust me the hardy boys are gonna be here they're gonna be here and i knew that there was something up because i don't trust anybody especially not wrestling promoters and that in, in like a dump like that um <laughs> so he's like oh, it was yeah, a high they're, school they're gonna be here and then what, I, what we come to find out is, is somebody says but they're not going to be wrestling. They just cut, went in there and cut a promo. So I'm losing my damn mind. I'm throwing things. I'm yelling. Kids are telling me to sit down and shut up. I'm yelling at kids. I'm yelling at their parents. Yeah, he yelled at a kid. I saw it. <laughs> he made a kid with a bull cut cry. Was like, he didn't want to cry. It was a high, it's a high school fundraiser. <laughs> There's drunk and out. You, you, guys were men. you guys were men there. I drove, so I kept my nose clean. And then there's <laughs> Elliot's a Jaeger, bottle of Jägermeister into the bag. And this is even before he's on the ketosis diet. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he used to do back then. Pure alcohol diet. He's pointing at a kid with a bull cut, making him cry. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, he's got a bull cut. The kid had a walking taco in one hand and tears just running down his shirt. <laughs> and there was clearly nothing I could have done to that kid that God hadn't already done. <laughs> oh, but I made him cry anyway. <laughs> no, you really did. Yeah, you made a kid cry. Yeah, I made him cry. And I told him, you know, I was like, I, I said the Hardy Boys were a bunch of jabronis. And then on the way out, the promoter slash principal of the school is standing at the exit trying to shake people's hands and say things are coming out. So I, I was walking out. I gave him the double middle finger like Stone Cold. <laughs> I told him, there's no way in hell I'm shaking your damn hand. That was not the Hardy Boys. You stole my $30, and I hope somebody steals it. That'd be like going to a Max Hot show and 
Tom and Nate aren't there. Yeah. It's just me and Elliot <laughs> farting into a microphone. That would be terrible. What if you brought Virgil in? Do you think people would be a little better about it? Oh, I think they would be absolutely stoked. Yeah, yeah they'd be pretty. One Virgil is at least as good as the two, one Nate. The entire rhythm section. <laughs> yeah, come on. At I least for the that. stories. I think that every time. <laughs> Have you ever considered it? I mean, since he calls you anyways, um, I, I don't think he had to pay him since he'll just set up his merch stand and make some money, right? He used to actually, he hasn't called me recently, but oh. he used to actually call He got me. a little too big for his britches. Yeah, he did. Ever since he, he was to... in that big time rap video, he's not returning our calls. You know, he's trying to get some oh, shit. You know, he got too big for his britches. He, uh, he... He used to call me and ask me where we were playing gigs that weekend. He'd be like, "Hey, I'm looking to I'm looking to do some work. You guys playing this weekend?" I'd always <laughs> lie to him. <laughs> so like, I, I, I think he would show up. I think he was, yeah, I had to. Oh, but he stops calling me. I don't know if he lost. You know what? Maybe we need to hit him up. We got the Millvale Music Festival coming up. Maybe he could run our merch stand there and the side hustle. He could sell maybe a Virgil shirt or two. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll yeah. cross promote. We got yeah, cross promote, guys. Come there you on, go. Tell there us. You go. cross promote, cross promote. What's well, up? You got, of course, for everybody local here in Pittsburgh area, Millville Music Festival. <laughs> it, it, it basically doubles the population in this town, just outside on the, just outside of Pittsburgh, just across the river from uh, from one of our neighborhoods here. Um, I, I think this is, your, this is your first year being a part of this, right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like the gathering at the Juggalos. <laughs> No, all the Max Out fans <laughs> invade Millville. All the Max Out fans full on invade Millville. All the Max Out fans from all the country converge into Millville to celebrate Max Out playing a show. Um, this one's gonna be really special because we got uh, the Bloody Seaman playing right after us. So it's gonna be it's gonna be one hell of a show, and I think everybody needs to come out. All the Max Out fans—they're all good people. You know, every time we get together and play, there's no fights or anything. It's all good. Just a bunch of love, just a bunch of Max Out fans. That's awesome. <laughs> Getting together and playing a show. Yeah, we're, we're we're playing at the Strange Roots Experimental Ales stage on Saturday from 6.30 to 7.10. It's going to be our first time playing there, second second to the end. So come on out. Buy Nate a beer. <laughs> so I can go I get drunk before I play my other gig later oh, yeah, that yeah, night. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and for those the for because I, mean, I know we have a lot of people on the West Coast, even in the chat room right now, uh like Alex Cars and uh, I saw Tina in there too. Uh, the you know the Millville Music Fest, of course, our sister company, uh, Psychic Media Services, is having a stage there as well. Uh, there, a lot of these stages are going to be streamed in some capacity too, so this is something you guys can experience. It's a lot of local music in Pittsburgh, but thanks to guys like the River's Edge uh, that 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 we partner with with some stuff. Um, you know, it is something that you guys can experience if you're not here in the area. Producer Missy, mm -hmm. who is way far away from the microphone, has something to add. You have 22 stages. How many are screaming? Oh, only? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. At the fest? Yeah. A lot of talented musicians. Oh, bands. it's it's great. There are going to be four or five of how them streaming. Are uh, wow. Yeah, how many of them are outdoors? Four or five of them? Okay. Oh, so there's a lot of stuff going on with that. So you guys can experience a little bit of it here uh, remotely uh, that are, uh, you know, uh, all across the Mayhem Nation. So, and of course, you guys, I, I believe I've been listening to you guys on Google Music. Yeah, absolutely. A anywhere music can be heard, you can find Max out. Lurks we got a band corner. camp. We got a band camp. Yeah, band camp's probably the best. Wait, is band camp yeah. still a thing? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, for, oh, absolutely. My God, that's been that's around the, forever. That's how artists actually get their, yeah, they can actually yeah, make, make, money, make a few money. bucks. Yeah, we don't get screwed Return by it. We get money. paid for Spotify. Return money, not, not make money. Yeah, Return exactly. Back. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the indies, man. You know, you get screwed by McMahon and Ted Turner. You go on Bandcamp. It's like, <laughs> yes. you, know, you make dope. Awesome. Well, where can people find you uh, out otherwise other than there at the uh, Millville Music Fest? You can find us at maxout.bandcamp.com. You can find us on Facebook. It's Max Out with two X's. M-A-X-X-O-U-T. Just for those who are spelling inclined and typing inclined. And then we're also, uh, yeah, we're pretty much anywhere digitally that you can find anything. You'll find iTunes, us. Spotify. Yeah, all that good stuff. 
Uh, yeah. So, and, and if you're in Meadville, Meadville, Pennsylvania, you'll find us or find Elliot pointing at a kid with a bowl cut and making him cry. And giving the principal <laughs> the finger. <laughs> and this is true. I was with him. Like, so, this is last year. So. And I littered. I just want to, I want to go on record that if you go there and you see an empty <laughs> bottle of Jaeger on the ground, I littered that. That was me. Well, if it's still there after a year, they yeah. got bigger problems than you littering. I was gonna, yeah. <laughs> There's a little plaque next to it said Elliot Pollock did this. Yeah. <laughs> I never forget. I never forget a slight and I never forgive. That's and that day they promised true. me the Hardy Boys and they didn't deliver. And Max out will never play that town again. <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, screw them. Meadville's Sorry, lost. Are you, gonna, Sorry are you gonna come to the Millville Music Fest? Uh unfortunately I'm gonna be in Michigan on a job, but uh Missy will uh-huh. be there. Representing for Sidekick Media, uh, our friend Katie, right. our friend Katie Dutters will be there. Who's been interviewing some people for Welterweight Wrestling? She's going to be uh, hosting a stage uh, at the event as well. I believe at the library of all places. So nice. uh, go check it out. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's rock and roll there. Thank Absolutely. you so Max out. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. us, man. Thanks for having us. And of course, uh, let me give a shout out to another local favorite here, Slice on Broadway, right up the street, celebrating Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza. They've been supporting the show for a good long time here. And of course, the OG, the original here in this neighborhood in Beachview, as well as in uh, Carnegie, PA, as well as uh, the East End, East Liberty on the other side of town, and uh, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. That I don't know, I haven't looked lately, but uh, I go you know, with the sports ball. But I hear they're doing pretty okay. And even even they were they, they're doing a Grubhub experiment with Slice on Broadway, so you can get even more delivery going on, you guys. Uh, so thank you so much for those guys supporting the P- supporting the Pizza Podcast Initiative. I just made that up. And always good talking wrestling with the guys in there at Slice on Broadway. PJ underscore Slice on the Twitter. And uh, and uh, let them know that the mayhem sent you. Hashtag kick the door. No, 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 no. I'm no. trying to get through one ad without it. And, and of course, <laughs> I just have Larry to wor- worry about here. And, and he completely gets it out. More locations, more doors, says Dave Podner. Doors for everyone. Jeez. Uh, anyways, uh, so there was a lot of wrestling last week. There's a lot of wrestling this week, uh, because not only one, one, I'm starting to watch Ring of Honor because they were just in Pittsburgh and I'm watching those episodes on fight. Uh, there was plus two shows this weekend I worked, um, which I'll get to in a little bit, but, uh, there was the greatest sisters Royal Rumble it's this, this. last Friday. We had a crew in here. Everybody took like a half day from work. And came in the studio and watched. Because I wasn't going to do anything because I'm like, oh, it's Friday. Who's going to come down? Apparently, everybody that usually comes to pay-per-views came to the Greatest Royal Rumble watch party here in the studio. Well, Friday is their Saturday over there. In Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Their, their, weekend well, is, that makes their sense. work weekend is Friday, Saturday. That makes sense. That makes sense. And it's the evening. So, so that was a Saturday night show for them. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Friday afternoon for us here. Wait, that doesn't math. That doesn't math out, right? Sure it is. Is it? Yeah. You sure it's not Friday night for them? No, Friday. Well, so their week, work week is Sunday to Thursday. Oh, oh, so it's their quotes Saturday. Yeah, I got Saturday. you. I got you. Uh, they still call it Friday. again. Larry is is our expert. I kept asking him questions during the show because he's the person I know of that has ever been closest to where the show was held <laughs> in in Dubai. You were, yeah, which is actually nowhere near where they were. No, other than it was in the Middle East. It was like on the opposite side of Texas. Yes, but in Saudi Arabia. But in Saudi Arabia. Or on the Saudi Peninsula. Yes. 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 Uh, that still makes you an expert. Sure, that makes you not? more knowledgeable in that area and culture than anybody I know. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a 9 a.m. start time out there on the West Coast, said Tina. That's rough. So that is rough. Well, you That's guys, real rough. You guys get a way better start time for like New Japan than we do, at least, I think. Right? Uh, yeah. I'm going to start at like 2 or 3 in the morning for us here. Yeah. So that's like midnight for them. So that's just a late show. Uh, I, like that feels that, that feels better well, no, than when the so, sun is rising at, during I the guess. main event. Yeah. <laughs> when people are riding by on the train as we're watching uh, Jericho and Omega. See, I, I, don't know, I don't know if watching a show until 5 a.m. is much better than watching a show until 8 a.m. 
I think if you at that at that point at that point I wouldn't even want to go to bed and get those extra th- those three no, hours of no, sleep because you're no. just gonna wake up feeling like crap, especially when it's on like a Thursday night, right? Yeah, the Thursday to Friday, you yeah. know. Uh, but anyway, so so Grace Royal Rumble, you know, like I was just talking with our friends down Slice, and it was like, yeah, it was a house show, right? It was. I mean, we yeah. did get a title. Uh, we did get a title crown, right, between the, with Hardy's and Bra- Bray. Yeah, Hardy and Bray. Uh, you know, we we got but some it, interesting non finishes for for the heavier the the higher end titles. Um, I mean, it was a good, fun show, and and to be honest, um, I don't think anybody would would have been disappointed because they're happy wrestling was happening. No, I don't think any, definitely not anybody. Over Sork, there. do do you know what made me the happiest? What made you the happiest? We saw Hornswoggle. We did see Hornswoggle. Oh, yeah, we did. Friend of the show, PB Smooth's tag team partner in AIW. Hornswoggle was there um, in in the Royal Rumble. There was a lot of surprises. You know, we, we were saying like that, you know, it felt like we thought that we there would be a lot of people doing double duty because we're like, how did they get into 50 people? Mm-hmm. And to the point you started noticing who was missing from that thing, right? Yeah. I thought I thought for sure Dean Ambrose was going to return or something. Yeah, because supposedly he was seen at an airport out there, maybe. Know. Yeah, but something, you know, some surprise. And then it got to the number 50 spot. And I'm like, oh, this got to be him for sure. And when you have 50 people there, you completely forget about the people who are already announced. So that mm-hmm. when it was came out as Jericho, I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot he was even in the show. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah, was... um, Erie's own Dan Matha. What? I don't Is that know. the Percocets talking? <laughs> it might be the Percocets talking. Oh, that was um, that was random guy that came out. Yeah, that was Erie's own Dan Matha. Uh, what? Yeah, there's there's a guy that got signed from Erie in NXT, and he was, I believe, in the in the Royal Rumble. Was he the big dude with the Mohawk? Uh, maybe. Okay, so he's not maybe. the some random sumo guy that Dave Podner's referencing. No, 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 okay. no. That was something else. Truth, truth. Oh, interpreting uh, Percocet Carlin's is going to be a lot of fun tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tina, Tina made an interesting comment in here. She made a donation to a women's organization to match monthly subscription just due to beliefs. Yeah, I mean, well, she's well, saying that, you know how it just felt like a por- propaganda show, yeah. kind yeah. of. I mean, there was definitely there was that little bit of like, hey, you know, we're not so bad. We're very progressive here in Jeddah and everything, right? So, yeah. I mean, that is a thing that's happening. Um, so, however you feel about where that lands in everything, um, there's, I mean, there's some interesting. It, you, the night, okay. In general, whatever you believe, it was interesting that wrestling fans had this discussion that normally doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think for that alone, this was worthwhile, you know, because I, I think a lot of people um, either didn't know the issues happening there that got raised, you know, um, you, you know, what? I didn't know Fabulous Mula was a really horrible being until we almost had a battle royal named after him. Yeah, For no instance. Yeah. Um, and, and even that there was that little bit of commercials like, hey, we completely let women drive now. At least this one. Or or, <laughs> you know, or whatever it was. Or, you know, that there were a lot of children and, and uh, you know, women in the in the audience. You know, and that was represented. So they're at least trying to make it look like that they're, be, they're being more progressive there. And, of course, it's a, it's a region that's on a different... Uh, well, the fun thing, social time frame, you're, you're, I, I guess we could say. You're talking about this ad and Dave Podner is mentioning and then the apology the next day for them showing women in an ad. Oh, they apologize for that. And the AP apparently covered that. So. Oh, of course it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's going to be that is going to be a huge thing. And, yeah. and this is this is what we talk about in technology all the time. Like this is a sticky situation where a company and WWE is a company wants to move into these other markets but they're going to have to carry the baggage of working in those other markets. Yeah. Right. Whether it be, you know, social interpretation or, or social, um, um, uh, representation, you know, like this, uh, you know, having to modify a show for things like this, you know, uh, oh, the Saudi government, the Saudi apologized. Go- government apologized. Okay. Well, the, yeah, wow. They, well, they, yeah, they have a problem with like showing women in like, uh, photos or like advertising and stuff mm-hmm. just in general like well, yeah the other the other fun heavy hitting topic was uh, and it was something i think you and i sort of talked about that uh sammy zane mm-hmm. wasn't on the show yeah he was they, they left him at home because of the serious situation um just to keep him out of the area for for, for that and i i don't even know the entire weight 
of how that's affected, right? Um, you know, not, not entirely keeping up with that, but you know, but, but there's always yeah. things going on in the Middle East. Um, but of course, you know, we talked about, I know we talked about, you know, kind of off air around it too. Like you're going to do a performance center out there, which makes sense because it's a centrally located and, and like Jeddah is kind of like the Orlando of middle, the Middle East is as far as I can interpret like how this e- is. entertainment city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was referred really to cool sports things multiple like times as the resort city yeah. of, which makes you feel like it's one of those like uh uh um like on fifth element how there was the resort planet kind of situation yeah yeah, yeah. Wait, uh there were death threats against davari of course yeah. there were when you come out in saudi that's arabia okay. yeah, that's saying that iran is better you are gonna get death threats yeah, yeah that makes sense that, that makes easy sense. heat also easy heat. also they take it seriously out there yeah. so that, actually that that i actually enjoyed because that was kind of like the whole uh yeah. like u.s russia thing mm-hmm. you know f- like comparatively for them yeah. so i thought yeah. that i thought that was kind of that was kind of neat that they actually went there and did that <laughs> and i'm with you alex like i completely wanted the the camera of what the women were up to he says i'd love to see if if uh if sammy and the women had had uh been on twitch with the live reactions to the royal greatest royal rumble as the uh, uh roll in for it just mystery so. science theatering it What's that? Just like doing like a mystery science theater where it's like just like their silhouette just watching the greatest Royal Rumble and them doing commentary on it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh! so apparently when they advertised the joint pay-per-view, it was supposed to be shown to the uh, to the crowd, uh, not shown to the crowd and just to us at the live. So apparently they ran the ads, you know, with just everybody in their wrestling gear and everything, until, including all the women in their normal wrestling gear. Oh. And that's what the problem was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah um, they show a little bit of skin. Yeah, not a lot, but like I mean, enough to be well, a problem, right? More, more than what they show. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. So again, so again, this is a social thing. This is the kinds of things they're going to have to deal with. Because now there's a ten year deal. WWE is going to have a presence there of some four. You know, maybe we get a Royal Rumble every year. Maybe, maybe we get something else every year. We'll see what this kind of develops into. Like this is kind of a, for, a, a, a funnily, you know, a, a 60, 70,000 people, a first step for this. It was interesting to watch because, again, it was a different crowd. The crowd, because I always wonder how it's going to react. Japan reacts differently, right? Yeah. The crowd was very into it, cheering for the good guys and everything. Um, well, they were saying that they were, they, like people weren't reacting up front. And stuff, you know, just because they weren't. It was a different crowd. They're up front. not. They're, yeah, they're they were weren't the diehard fans. They're, it, it they're seemed, like VIPs. You yeah, know? it seemed pretty obvious is that that was that was like all the you know the princes and the, that's like all the, the people the, you'd see in like the club seats. Yeah, that's all the like that, at the at the arena. That's you all know? the money people because they had yeah. like if you if you didn't see it like the entire floor which didn't go out they did not cover the entire floor no, of this arena at all. which is what a soccer arena you said right yeah it's huge so so there's like you know the platform like you would see in an outdoor wrestlemania show and then there was you know uh i don't know maybe 20 rows of seats but they're bigger recliner seats kind of not recliners but, but bigger they're, cushier they're big seats. comfortable yeah. seats they take up like maybe two or three seats mm-hmm. that you would get at an arena with a folding chair mm-hmm. You know, could this like, be uh, Tina saying? Could this be a way to funnel back to the overseas bases for a tribute to the troops? I don't think so. I don't, no, I, I don't think. No, I, 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 I don't think if there is anything active going on, they're not going to be doing tribute no. to the troops um, in that fashion anymore. Because it's got to be problematic. You know, it, it'd be one thing if something breaks out. I think they'll go back to it. But right now, I don't think there's as much need to. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know. Of course, there's. Uh, uh, deployed, you right. know. Well, there's they, plenty deployed out there. They're still doing like the tribute to the troops. And they stuff, are, but they're doing. But it's it in like, like Fort Worth, yeah, and, like Fort Worth, Texas, in, a, in the arena on the base or, or something, something yeah. right? Uh, so you know, it would be nice. I, I, I like those shows, and I like the idea. And and they do still, I think, go and visit some areas. They just don't do a show. They just maybe do like kind of a kind of mini greet, meet and greet tour. I think. Uh, so Christmas in Saudi Arabia. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, which is pretty much what they did when we had uh, you know the Afghan and the Iraqi wars over there. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but no, I, and, and I like that they do still do that as as a thing in general. So uh, again, I, I think we're gonna see we're gonna see more of this, and it's not gonna be you know it's bringing attention to issues either way. You yeah. know, um, I don't think WWE has done anything outright glaringly offensive in this. I think it was like terrible timing. 
because yeah. especially with them pushing like the whole women's movement you know it it kind of it kind of just like it feels a little backlashy yeah yeah no pun intended no no absolutely but like yeah it was just it was, sorry i was reading the chat um <laughs> well, tina says that they had one there at the uh, joint base uh at lewis mccord they had fun at that one so yeah I, I, again you know it's one of those great things that they keep doing even if it's low even if it's yeah local uh you know in states or out you know it, yeah. it, 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 it sounds like it's a great experience and a cool thing for them to be I, doing. I feel like those those shows like more than like some of the other like house shows i feel like they could do like more like serious storyline stuff It'd really kind of yeah like if well they always used to televise the tribute to the troops and stuff still but, do but yeah and but that was whenever they did that it was still like a normal house show or like this saudi show where yeah where you knew at nothing like serious was going to happen storyline wise well here's here's the fun part like i know that the uso does different things what is what is their tour schedule like in comparison to what wwe's been doing with true tribute oh, for I, have the no troops? Idea. True. I mean are, are they actively over there when we're not involved in active conflict type of stuff or or, or, or not active conflict because obviously that would not be a a good thing but just like how how does that work out in comparison i don't know tina i don't know tina might know tina if if you're listening (laughs) she is the you have any idea what i'm talking about she is closer to this than you are to Ah. the middle eastern part that we're talking about as an expert yes yes (laughs) she is more experty than i Mad Mike is asking for a hot tags, sir. That is good. That is good. Tina's saying that we well, we did get great moments like Brock and Randy uh, playing football p- soccer uh, during their time in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so we are going to bring Mad Mike here in, uh, hot tag him in, and get his thoughts on this. We talked about this a little bit, of course, uh, last night on the Raw wrap up, and I feel like we we're, we're we're just re Raw wrapping up a being a little bit here, um, but uh, we did get a lot of cool moments. We did get things like. Um, we did get things like like the the soccer moment with Brock and Randy, right? Yeah. We did get the the weird dinner <laughs> video with Undertaker just hanging out with everybody, right? More, cr- weirder than that, you had Roman Reigns sitting next to Triple H having a nice, pleasant conversation, yeah, exactly. and Braun Braun Strowman was sitting right next to him, just stuffing his face with mashed potatoes or something. Yeah, you know, I mean, it just just this nice little dinner going on here. Ka- Kali with- Nobody's talking to Great Kali for some reason. Yeah, he, uh, he, Russo's he, hanging out over there on the end. There's some some violins playing, some music, you know, uh, and uh, there you go. <laughs> Happy Rusev Day, everyone. Happy Rusev Happy Day, Rusev by the way, because well, like, he was Happy. there. Brock Lesnar hanging Day. out. Vince is hanging out, and I don't think you can hear much of the conversation really, or right, enough to make any sense of it. But uh, there it is. Oh, well, yeah, Braun's finishing up. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna re- review um, wrestler videos. Uh, so I-, I saw the picture of the other side of like Brock, Taker, and Vince, and I thought it was an image from a new table for three. Yeah, so someone posted about that. Like, that's a table for three. I'd be interested in watching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. What they like the dude, the guy with the camera. What they weren't showing is the, um, like the sports guy who was like handing bro on the belt, like the main prince uh, mm-hmm. in charge of like sports and entertainment. Oh, or so so the kid whose birthday it was. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah, as we <laughs> pretty, said, pretty much. We really are. Yeah. Are we really sure that that it's it's somebody? It was some so the the prince's kid or something that booked this thing. Uh, so, oh no that guy totally booked all of it oh, oh the no, guy no. Did. If, the, if the prince's kid booked it we would have had every title change hands and something happen <laughs> we had something happen they just were botches no uh, <laughs> yeah we did, had something happen it was titus o'neill well it was, it was really... titus it was titus o'neill it was jinder mahal botching that whisper in the wind all right it, hold, it, on, hold on hold it on would, I, have, I have an explanation it, for jinder it was the IC title smacking balor in the head and busting his eye open so hold on. <laughs> i have an explanation for jinder i have an explanation you see um as you guys know jeff hardy is not allowed to travel See, um, what? That, okay. No, All right, no, wait, let him finish. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Je- that match that Jinder Mahal had should be stricken from the record as a non-U.S. title match because I don't believe that was Jeff Hardy. Who do you think it was? I believe that was Willow. No, Willow, Willow was dressed as yes. a leprechaun in the Greatest Royal Rumble match. No, no, that was no, Willow. No, no. no. Oh. <laughs> Larry, you didn't watch Impact. We're talking about different Willows. No, we're talking. We're talking about different Willows. Oh, you're talking about the movie. 
guys. What were you talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, we're talking about uh, uh, Jeff Hardy's alter ego was oh. Willow and it's Jeff you know, Hardy's alter was, ego in TNA who can make magic happen. That's, and that's how that's Are you how, sure um, we're not Jeff, talking about the movie? Pretty sure. Okay. Yes, pretty Missy. Sure. All right. We're sitting here talking about this crown prince as if he's a kid. Tina points out <laughs> that he's like 32. Tina, Tina, don't hold, don't bog no, us down with facts, please. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm 35. If I could have had a greatest Royal Rumble for my birthday, I would have done it too. That's true. That's true. If you but had oil money, I and got did. you one better, Prince. I went to WrestleMania where I saw two battle royals, motherfucker. Well, you know <laughs> what, Mad Mike? Did yes. you get a Seamus cake? No. What? Did you get a Seamus cake? They got a sh- they got a Seamus cake. They got a Seamus cake. I baked Sorg. Were there Seamus too many cake. limes? <laughs> by the way, by the way, she can't, he can't hear you because the microphone's over here for him. Oh, it just just a heads yeah. up. Yeah, um, because Missy's on the other end of the room. M- Missy, on that Seamus cake, were there too many limes? Were there too many limes? limes? It would have been amazing if it was lime flavored. In retrospect. <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to make you another. That's for one. the next one, next birthday, next birthday, okay. or next anniversary. Uh, anyway, so so no, I, <laughs> what Matt Carlin's? Don't bog down any of this conversation with actual facts, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank Hashtag you, Percocet Matt. Fake news. Uh, fake uh, news. Dina also said there's a there's quite a lot of tours that roll through the USO during the holidays, especially so. Um, and and I think. I think they have to team up with USO, I think, so, for that, don't they? So you know yeah, so you know we're getting in November, right? What? We're getting the world's greatest survivor series with fifteen man tags. Oh jeez. So as nobody in, can see the ringside. As in fifteen man tags or fifteen man as in like fifteen. Where's your collar, yes. sir? It it de- it depends on where they at social where they're at socially at that point. Do you know who's gonna win those fifteen man man tags in November? Yes. Uh, not Sami Zayn. Mustache, mustache Mountain. <laughs> mustache Mountain. Mustache Mountain. Okay. Is that facial hair allowed? I don't. I don't know. Is that custom? Is it November Mustache Month? Oh, mo- oh November. I get it. I get it. Oh. I get it. Actually, that would be no. pretty funny if 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 we had team a team with facial hair and a team with no facial hair. So wait, wait. So like, is that like shirts versus skins, but for your face? Yes. Sorry, Sorg. You cannot participate. On I'm the, out. The like shirts. half of this crowd is, is is out here. All right. Anyways, there is a greatest Royal Rumble, but there is also the greatest this backlash. Um, well, wait a minute. What? Did yeah. we touch upon the Titus thing already? I, we talked about it a lot last night. I, we did. We did momentarily. Okay. Uh. It, it, okay. Okay. The the, the the Titus thing is pretty amazing for what has come out of it. Um, the shirt they came up with is fucking stupid. Oh. Though. What? What? Titus World Slide? No, that's not the shirt. What's the shirt? This one I saw. Um, no, that's not a that's not an official shirt. Okay. Was it Titus it, sliding and like hitting all the Mario it, Kart bananas? It just, it shows like whether you trip, slide, or rumble, do it worldwide. All right, that's like, a little that, wordy. That's yeah, just that's, fucking that's stupid. Much. Yeah, it's a little wordy for me. It's like they wanted to give him merch but not wanted to sell any of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, but they've no they, they've been known to be clever about stuff like that. Oh yeah. Like when like when Cesaro busted his teeth, they came out with Swift Cyborg. Like yes. Yeah, that was that's legitimately well, funny. I mean, at least you know, here's a preview of the newest uh, Mattel set of uh, Shockmaster. That passing was the torch amazing. That to was amazing. Titus. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that is appropriate, of course. Uh, it, it, and I'm thinking, I it, the more I look at it, and I've loved it. Um, <laughs> I, I really think it is it is a little bit of a work uh, that that he did that. It's a little too perfect. When, it's when not a work. It. It's definitely feeling, not a work. It's still real to me. Damn it! it it's still definitely real to me. Uh, that or, or there's it's fake as shit to me. Sorg, I guess actually. Sorg, are you going to create an entire documentary based on? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's going to be the Titus World Slide Theory, and it's coming soon to IndieWrestling.us. Anyways, <laughs> all right, uh, sorry. Anyways, backlash is a is a thing that's uh, coming up this weekend, which kind of surprised wait, you. Wait, a little bit. wait a minute! Wait that's a minute! This wait a minute! Wait a minute! What? Yeah, that is this weekend. God damn it! Carlin's. Carlin's is he has another comment there about the greatest Royal Rumble. The Gurr Show. Wait, yes. wait, I love that it was WWE Gurr is the is the yeah. hashtag. Yeah. Yes, we're he wanted all to say Gurr because we really want something to happen. 
Yes. The show itself was one hell of a spectacle. He says he loves me some pyro. It was, and that was good. It, it, it was fun. It was great to see, you know, any, it, anything where it's like, hey, here's 60, 70,000 people watching wrestling and they're into it. Yeah. And really, honestly, they are more into it for this entire show than there were the entirety of and WrestleMania. I was more excited Anytime about Anytime Miz gets pyro, I have to be on board with it. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So looking for it on that aspect, of course. So no, Titus did not slide into DMs. If that means sliding under the <laughs> ring, I think you know, maybe that means something else. I don't know. Well, uh, now, now someone has to post sliding into your DMs, like, and then they just post it. Oh, like it's all over Giphy. So, so yes, yeah. backlash is this weekend. We will get Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe, which Look I I'm happy with because it's Roman Reigns. What? Why are you not? What, what's wrong, guys? It's pointless. I mean, it's, pointless. it's pointless. All these cro- it's absolutely all these, pointless. All of these cross brand matches are pointless. Maybe, yep. especially the title matches. Maybe there will be a point after this. Maybe the match <laughs> will make its own point. They are making the entire month after Mania obsolete. Yeah. Delete. Obsolete. It'll, fade, it'll fade away and classify itself as it's obsolete. So we're getting Samoa versus Samoa to find out who's the real Samoan? Yeah, who, who's the real Samoan named <laughs> Joe? I feel like we need to do a cookie thing out of this. Ooh, yes. Yes, please. Mm. Uh, Girl Scout cookies, but they all have in different icing the word Joe on it. Yes. We will get Nakamura and uh and Styles in a no disqualification match. I'm sure that will be just fine. Okay, I'm okay. Sure. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? I mean it's, you know, it's it's SmackDown versus SmackDown. Yes. Uh-huh. It's gonna be an awesome match. It's the and, third match. And it actually has to do with a storyline. Yes. And and the title could actually change hands. Yes. Absolutely. I kinda but hope it's the main event of the night. Seth Rollins and the Miz is dumb. Nope. Unless there, unless there's a competing U.S. title match on the show, which there isn't, right? No, no, there yeah. is. It's Randy Orton and uh, Jeff Hardy. But they're both on the same show now, right? They are. They are. Yeah. So no, yeah. yeah. So it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it, no, because that that just means that the U.S. title is staying on SmackDown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or or Miz is going to get the title and he's going back to Raw. Oh, Miz isn't going back to Raw. Yeah, I don't think no, it's Miz, not going to work that way. Miz is not going back to Raw. No, I mean it's just going to solidify. Um, Seth is the it's, champion. It's a shame because why the fuck are we even gonna do Miz and Daniel Bryan if it's not for the IC title? I because it doesn't need to be. But it, it, it really kinda, does. Why? Kinda, no, it doesn't. No, it kind of does. That was the whole reason the feud existed. No, the feud has nothing they, to do with the Intercontinental title. The feud Sorg, had to do with their. Sorg, the feud had Sorg. to do with 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 the things he said about Bryan. Uh, uh, Miz feeling like he's not getting um, a fair shake Sorg, as far as things Sorg, go. I I strongly disagree. Okay. Um, the last match that Daniel Bryan had was when he won the Intercontinental Championship. Okay. He had he had to give up the championship because of injury. Mm-hmm. When Miz won the title, he wasn't being booked because Daniel Bryan was the GM. Miz Miz's whole argument was. I made the title relevant that you couldn't keep because you were injured, because you lied to your fans and said you would come back. It entirely centered around the Eric Connell Championship. But now I think it's more about Daniel Bryan can get some comeuppance because he couldn't fight back, like like Alex is saying in the chat room. Um, and Matt, and Carlin's is mentioning that that was not Bryan's last match. I don't think... He, I, don't I think, think it was. I think it, he, no, I'm I pretty it sure was. it was. I don't know. It he's was. on Percocet, so I don't think we can go by him as a as yeah, a source right not, now. He's not going. Uh, so let's, <laughs> hashtag fake news. He, he, there might have been a tag match the Raw after, yeah. but it was it was that that was the title that he had to forfeit. All right, chat room for uh, we, maybe you can fact check us for this one. So I either way, I think I think I think it's fine without a title. But anyways, uh, you know, hey, yo, we got backlash and it's a, a joint pay per view, which means uh, it's just every title gets defended, and I'm sure we're going to forget about one tag team or another eventually. Does just Ron like Rousey we used have to. a match? No, not uh, no. Okay, does Ronda? Does uh, Ronda? Oh no, Ronda is not wrestling. No, that's so weird. No, uh, Ronda's, Ronda's not going to wrestle until SummerSlam, guys. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping money, money in the bank gets counted uh, for that, right? Sorg, ten bot bet. 
Uh, we haven't even got. I don't oh, who kept track of who's boss is what? Who won the last one? I don't even know who this belongs to anymore. I don't. I don't even know. We, I think I. I won, no, but. you know what? I think the last one was about Kane. Because I think both. Uh, actually, I think this is Billy's. I think this is Billy's bot. I think that, that was owed to you. <laughs> uh, the, the, this is yours, but um, yeah. I didn't ask. I didn't ask why he had Thai money. Anyways. <laughs> because he got it from you for did something. You get it from me? Did yeah. I give him? Did I give him the bot? When he, we he had, won it at Mania the year before. Yeah, when we were at work hard for the for Mania before we got the space here. Oh, he, he won that's it because right. I, you used that for your bet. Yeah, the, that's right. I did. I did. That, that's what I put in for, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, we do get Carmella and Charlotte. That should be fun. Yeah, that'll be a good time. Uh, we have. I'm glad that this is happening because it's the most I care about. Bobby Lashley teaming with Braun against. Uh, the yep fellas hard pass hard pass hard, pa- yep. hard pass on this match there's a lot of good in this match no, no hard there's pass. not nope no nope nope okay. uh braun should be doing something better with his time are you saying this is a downgrade in tag partner uh yes yes, <laughs> yes i am we <laughs> want because nicholas guess what? We want the last nicholas. guy he teamed with he won the tag team championships just saying just saying and we're talking about last night of course naya and alexa bliss uh, we highly disagree with each other on how good the Alexa build has been with the Moments of Bliss. Yeah, can I tell you how much I love the Moments of Bliss? You've been uh, Missy has been loving them. I, uh, I agree. With the, with the material that Alexa has, Alexa's been given, she's done great with it. I just don't agree with the material. No, and that's just it. Like I look at it thinking, how are they airing this without having some f- some like massive feedback from the crowd? Like I can imagine some people being pissy because essentially it's satirical. Like it's, yeah. it's very much just in oh, your yeah. face. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, she's the bully. I'm not the bully. She's the bully. Yeah. And I'm surprised that they haven't gotten backlash from that. Well, yeah, also oh. I, I, I think in context, yeah. no, I'm serious. Circle, I'm surprised. It depends it's, on the circle. The looking. I think, uh, I think in context, because she was such the upfront bully going into this and now they're trying to like, it's like, oh no, actually, you know, I think that I think that context helps it too. Yeah, but still. Uh, and of course, we mentioned Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. Yay! Yawn. That's going to be yawn. That's, yep. Are that we, wasn't a good match in 2006. Are we already bored with uh, cross promotional pay per views again? I'm just bored of Randy Orton. Uh, we'll see. I'm bo- Jeff Hardy as a singles wrestler has never worked. Mm. Has never worked. I want to say it worked. I think it worked. Just, Maybe when he was ten years younger. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Then now, yeah. That's, I'm that's just when he, saying. That's when he was a singles wrestler and champion and doing great things with CM Punk. Okay, Alex. Yes, and I said that there was probably a tag match of some sort, and there was, but, but basically, Brian had to give it up right right after that. He was still yeah, wrestling saying, injured. Alex is saying that uh, April 16th episode of SmackDown was his last thing ring match. He teamed with the United States champion John Cena to defeat the uh, tag champs uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. So Tyson Kidd, what he's what's what's he up to these uh, days? He's an agent now because he got too injured and can't wrestle anymore, which is a yeah. Damn Samoa shame. Joe muscle busted him out of the business basically. Yeah, but uh, but that wasn't his. He had no no. It wasn't his fault, obviously. Yeah, but, you know. yeah, yeah. I don't want to, yeah, Joe. That was just, that was just that just happened to be the last bump that he took. Yeah. Yeah, and that then that, that's true too. With with Carlin's saying, Jeff Hardy was over and moving tons of merch before he left WWE last time. Oh yeah, that doesn't mean his push worked. I think that's yeah, supposed to be what that know. means: is you sell a lot of exactly shit ton of merch. Wait, isn't that the point of wrestling to sell shit? Um, I'm Other sorry, than your does injuries? Roman Reigns sell a lot of merch? Yes. Does his pu- does his push work? No. <laughs> Mm. This push doesn't work. Okay. It's 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 happening where it's making money. That's I think that's it working. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon says Jeff is pushing past forty. And Brandon's bringing up a good point that they announced before Mania that all pay per views will now be co branded. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's fine if the if they're co branded, but and like have like a relevant like storyline. But, but, but now it, you've cut down all that time for them to build those stories. There's, there's no, but like everything that we have this for this pay per view is. There's no storyline so yeah. for all the for all the for all the matches, except for Charlotte and Carmella. That's not that's not really? a cross, that's, that's not a cross think, promotion match. You think that's the strongest thing? You don't think Samoa Joe coming out no. every week? We, I don't we know. So video and, and, no. and running there down. Was, there was Roman absolutely Reigns. no reason for him to come out and start joining the Lesnar fan club 
and going after Roman Reigns when he doesn't even have a title. And Samoa Joe is an idiot like we, for not helping Roman win the belt. We talked about because- we talked about it yesterday that when everybody was challenging Roman at the beginning of the show, it's like they're just fighting for second place. No, they're fighting for third place. Because guess what? The first place guy isn't even on the fucking show. All right. Well, backlash yeah, is this know, weekend. If you're yeah. in the area, uh, we are having a watch party here, of course, uh, for it. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, and, uh, you know, lots of snacks and stuff. And, it, and I, I think in general, if you can watch these these shows with a group of people, it'll... Uh, it helps your enjoyment level, yeah, I think. I think so. Uh, if you're not uh, uh, deep into it. So, hey, if you want to get your the word out there, like we're, we're getting our friends in here, uh, Max out, let, let people know about them, the Virgil video that Virgil still calls. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm so afraid of Virgil finding out where this studio is and that we do wrestling if, things. Because I, like, I feel like a table is going to show up out front of our studio randomly. Sorry. You've yes. already established that the highest piece of technology that Virgil has is a fax machine. Yeah, but I mean, do you like, fax maybe, things? Maybe he's going to be on the T and see our Shawn Michaels stand up and be like, "Oh, that's there's wh- some marks." That's why Shawn is hanging out over here, that off to the side. That would be it, the best promotion that you could get for this place to have Virgil outside of this place selling merch to like passersby oh. as we're doing the podcast are you kidding me that would be hilarious one day this is probably going to end up happening we need there to will probably be a day where virgil's in call front of my studio i will book it people and call have, the band people have them yeah don't call virgil your, yourself that's no, scary no <laughs> but, so in this in this frame of mind <laughs> you're you're essentially using max out as sorg's virgil condom yeah keep yourself clean you don't want that glitter from his Why are you looking at me you? like that? Virgil Condom would be a great name for a punk band. <laughs> oh, God. No. no. Can, can we stop talking about Virgil? Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about how you can get, get to know our audience. Hashtag uh, meat sauce. <laughs> Sorry. That's my, la- that's my last Virgil joke. If you want to sell your meat sauce or whatever the case may be, do it with Mayhem. Looking for some great advertising options that won't break the bank. We'll work with you. We'll get the word out. I mean, look at look at the mass expansion, the mass Pittsburgh expansion of a slice on Broadway since so we've been working with them. Huh? Huh? Uh, hashtag Mayhem Bump. That's right. Hashtag Mayhem Bump. If you want a Mayhem Bump, hit us up. Talk to Missy at uh, info at sorgatronmedia.com, and we'll have a chat with you and see what we can do to get you in this show, a part of the Mayhem family, and let the people know about what's going on with you. Uh, We'll be back after this with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hockey is fake. Wrestling is real. We're back. The Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is time for the big question. Mad Mike is with us from Poughkeepsie, New York. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, pens. Fuck the caps. Oh, boy. Because hockey's happening. And also, Larry with us here in studio. I also do not like the Crapitals. Mm. Mm. That is all I'm going to say about hockey for the rest of the night, though. Good. We're done with that. We're done. All right. Uh, but there, we had a pretty big weekend. Like I said, uh, um, a lot of fun stuff that's uh, actually up on, uh, well, some up and some coming to Indie Wrestling Night US. Of course, IWC's com- uh, Clearfield Carnage uh, 4 was Saturday night. That's up on video on demand and digital download. Uh, great ladder match with uh, friends of the show Wardlow and RC Dupree had like a match of the year candidate. Good stuff. And also had the opportunity to reconnect with uh, some old uh, colleagues. And uh, go up to Welterweight Wrestling 3 up in Cleveland. I was uh, working ringside camera for the iPay-Per-View. You guys can go check that over on Fight.TV. Um, but we got to meet. Uh, he was introduced on the show. And uh, we actually do have an interview in the can for Indie Mayhem show. Because uh, Katie uh, Dutters was be- backstage chatting with a lot of the tiny, tiny people on the Welterweight show. Uh, <laughs> she's, t- she's six foot tall um but anyways she had a chair so they didn't and you didn't have a chair and you can't teach that um (laughs) but uh one of them that they had a chance to talk with was uh brian pillman jr the son of course of brian pillman hence the junior uh this past weekend on low weight wrestling three uh and and you know he was uh as part of the show he was presented with an award for his father of course um and which led to some 
really interesting hijinks. Uh, we'll just put it that way. You guys will have to see the pay-per-view or DVD or digital download uh, to see how that went. Um, but this week's big question that kind of derived from that uh, that I think Missy came up with here was uh, which legacy wrestlers have uh, filled their family's shoes best and which have it? I mean, there's a lot of them. Of course, Brian Pillman's kind of just starting his career for the most part, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what he's going to... I know a lot of people have been talking about he was just recently on uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast. Of course, you know, people have Pillman's tag partner and, and friend, of course. Uh, so that's one I, I definitely need to get to, get around to listening to. Cool dude, meeting him. Uh, that's actually the second time I've had a chance to meet him. Didn't uh, Austin apologize for breaking his toys? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I thought I, I thought I read that somewhere. I'll have to check Austin, that out. Where Austin apologized for like wrecking his kiddie pool. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Oh, that's great. So so yeah. Again, there's a lot of second, third generation wrestlers. Like who really kind of sticks out in your mind as ones that have really superseded and 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 maybe have it. Well, I think The Rock is a given. The, yeah, The Rock. He I think be, people forget that he's a second and third generation wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as disappointments for me, I think. I don't know. Do you really want me to go through the list? <laughs> Not all of them. One? You can pick one. Uh, Tamina. Yeah. <laughs> the Snuka siblings have not done well in wrestling. I I don't know. I mean, she hasn't murdered anyone, so. Oh. Well, uh, you're yeah. setting the bar kind of low. I. It's still a bar. <laughs> I don't set the bar. I, <laughs> you just hit people in the head. No, but I mean. Tamina's not terrible. It's no, just, no, no. She's no. not anything. I don't. She's not on TV. She's not. Yeah. She. They tried that thing with Lana and it flopped before it started. Mm-hmm. She was fine when she was on Team Bad. It's just they she was got an enforcer. Nia, she wasn't doing they got, anything. They got Nia Jax, who's a slightly better Tamina, <laughs> and who's also a second generation wrestler. Mm-hmm. Is she? Yeah, she's uh, cousins with The Rock. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, she's part of that family too. Okay. Um, because I think that's who kind of inspired her. It, and it's interesting because like Nia is a thing there. Charlotte, of course, I think definitely. I think Charlotte will. Yeah. I I, I want to. I, I don't want to say this. Like I don't want to say will supersede her father. But I, think so. I mean, to a point, kind of. Well, here's here's my thoughts on that, and this is as a woman speaking. Mm-hmm. I feel that Charlotte is having a very tough fight trying to get out from under her father's shadow. But she's I, but doing I think, okay with it, but I, I think... I think she's somebody who embraces her lineage and it works for her versus... But is that detrimental to her? Because is she going to be able to... Charlotte is as her own. Is mm-hmm. Charlotte going to be able to have her own identity aside from her father or is it going to be one of those... You're only here because of your name. I, I, I think that her name really doesn't have any bearing on her character whatsoever at this point just because of the quality of matches she's putting out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's, I'm putting, kind of with she's, that too. she's putting out like incredible matches on big shows consistently. And, and, and that's the thing. I think I think that quality of work that she's done, again, she's making... While, while accented by the lineage, yeah. like she still is paving her own path in I, the work. I yeah, I hate I, I hate when wrestlers recycle their parents' gimmick. Like or like whatever. Curtis Axel, it did not work. No. It did not he, work. He is less than perfect. He is I, and I think Axel is fine. I think he does he should get a little bit more credit than he does get. He's entertaining. Yeah, he is. Absolutely. But he's not perfect. But he's not a Mr. Perfect and he's not Larry the Axe Henning. And he he needs to not try to be either one of them. Yeah. I think that's why he I think that's why he was originally called Michael McGillicuddy. Oh, what? absolutely, it was. What did you, know, you say? Like, yeah, he was. That, that no, was no, the no, name no. they say, gave him. Say that again. Michael McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy. That's that's not a joke. That's what that was his name when that's, he first started. That's not a joke. Teamed with a uh, Husky Harris. That's worse. I was just about to say that's worse and now than he's Husky teamed, Harris. Now yeah. he's teamed with another Rotunda boy. But um, go, going back to Charlotte, I think Charlotte's legacy hampers her profession like her character development Mm -hmm. because the second she goes back to being a heel she just turns into rick flair again that's true and and that would normally not be a problem except she's not a good face she's not a good face like 
There are some people who just aren't good faces, and Charlotte is not a good face. Hey guys. In my opinion. Guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have some breaking news. Oh, no. No, no. Wait for that. Wait for that. Wait for that. No, I have some. Okay, okay, okay. go ahead. Speaking of news. second generation. I, I, I'm i sorry. This, this is, this Did is, Hornswoggle come back? This is very big news. Glenn Jacobs is leading Brad Anders by 17 votes. Who? 100% precincts are in. Wow. Who's Glenn Jacobs? Who's that guy beat? <laughs> Who's Glenn Jacobs? Kane. What? That's this guy That's right news to here. Me. This guy That's right got, here. That's gotta be Kane. That's the face of your new mayor, Knoxville County. Technically, he's not a mayor. What? He's like a county executive. What's it's still mayor? Uh, it's, it's, it's they, the they call it, they, mayor. Call, they call it a mayor. Oh, like you, it's just the way that they're formatted in that state. Well, that's weird. It's a mayor of okay. a county. So sorry, of an entire county. That guy right there, he's bringing the fire in the brings room to Knoxville County. It's amazing. Yeah, no, that was that was huge news. We we had to share it. So. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now you know why he wasn't in Saudi Arabia. Because he was campaigning. He was getting that last campaign in, man. And and how much how much did he wrestle while campaigning too? That that's impressive. And so, too much, too much, too, too much, much. Says Mike. Uh, but anyways, back to it. Uh, Matt Clarence saying you cannot deny Randy Orton as much as you're bored with him today. The career he's had over his father. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, highly that's more fair. significant. I mean, easily. Yeah, sure. So, I, I got no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I just don't think there's any place for him on SmackDown. No, no, no. I mean, really, okay. in, 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 on either yeah. show. That's a whole other discussion, I think. That's my but, only uh, problem with them. <laughs> yeah, um, there, are just, there are just certain people who have run their courses. But um, the Rhodes I mean, family. You, have, I was going to say, you got to mention the Rhodes. The Rhodes. The, the team is mentioning the Rhodes says they've done pretty decent as well. Um, I, yeah. I think, I think I think Cody's surpassing everyone right now. Yeah, made, made Co- their, Cody's next. Cody's doing next level stuff. Made their own marks, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gold dust, obviously. I mean, yeah, it's this character thing, but it's it, done well, right? And, and it's, it's lasted. And, yeah, it's lasted. It's lasted over thirty years. He's doing, and he looks better than ever. Like I want to. I watched some of those like '90s Gold Dust matches. It was like, wow, I can't believe that's him because he just looks in in comparison. Practically not in shape, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, it, it, and, and, and Cody is just I was watching uh, the latest episode of Ring of Honor today, which they just started putting out the ones that were filmed here in Pittsburgh. Uh, of course, I was busy at uh, Meadville not getting drunk, uh, but, but uh, <laughs> well, I'll fill you in later, Mike. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, it, it's, it, you know, it, yeah, it, it, between him and, and, and uh, um, uh, Brandy Rhodes, like, you know, doing what they're doing. Yeah, it's it's uh, he is coming back to WWE and he's going to main event at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, at this at this rate, you know, yeah. he has to. Oh be. yeah, absolutely. If not, he's going to main event Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> definitely, almost definitely at this point. And you know, it just yeah. you know he's able to do that, and and it shows how much he has, and and then that's that's really awesome. Uh, Teens pointing out the hearts, the hearts, and the Windhams have done uh, fairly decent. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, how about how about Rey Mysterio? Has, has Nicholas escaped his father? Eclipsed his father. Eclipsed his father. The referee. The referee. I would there say he go. has. There you go. I mean, he has been yes. a champion. So, um, but um, Rey Mysterio, like we yeah. often forget that he's the he's like a second generation wrestler. Yeah, I, but his uncle was and, the first Rey Mysterio. Hell, Eddie and Chavo. Mm-hmm. I think they both surpassed where like Gory and Chavo Senior were. It went, Easily. And, 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 well, and also the uh, the Guerreros were wrestling royalty in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, I mean, if you're going to say just success in America is a higher bar than success in Mexico, then there you there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, no, I think I think that definitely makes sense there. The clones have been disappointing. The clones, the c- colognes, yeah. the colognes, colognes. The clones. Yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. I mean, they've they've all had their kind of moment, but. Not for long. They had a gerbach also. Now that I think about it. Did they? Yeah, he tried to do. One of them tried to do a springboard and fell on his ass on the middle rope. Mm-hmm. I can't remember which cologne it was. Wow. Yeah, I think the gold dust has been in thirty years and looks incredible now. So, uh, I think there's anybody else, and nobody else off the top of my head right now. But Ted DiBiase Jr. Have you gone through the mm, chat room yet? No. 
Uh, um, we have been as da- we've been going. David so. David San Martino. Carmella has surpassed David Sar- San Martino. David San Martino. No, he was a disappointment. Uh, he was, he as was, far I remember when they brought when they brought him in, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. on superstars and stuff, they were touting him as a big deal, and yeah. he just completely flopped. Yeah, absolutely. But like, absolutely. like a lot because WWE has tried the second generation thing for a long time, and it didn't really connect until like we got your your Dwayne Johnsons and your Randy Orton's. Um, because like, because there's a lot of Scott Putzky jobber matches that are just not good. <laughs> oh, Stasiak. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. All right. So disclaimer: DJ Lunchbox, please do not listen to the next two minutes. But yes, Meat did not surpass his dad. Oh, here you go. Carmelo's dad was an enhancement talent. I was not aware of that. Hmm. All right. Uh, ADR uh, Alberto Del Rio. Um, I, would you say I don't know? I don't know his lineage necessarily. I think we should just keep it to WWE. Yeah. Um, well, I, no, no, no. It's, it's, it, it's hard. It's hard to compare those. Other it, it is for that. I, but well, I, like, I, well, we're also comparing territory days with certain guys versus going to WrestleMania, right? I mean, the business became bigger and they got bigger with it. So, but then in that same vein, there's guys that came through that and they were the Curtis Axles to the Mr. Perfects, right? So, yeah. I mean, and I, man, I hate sliding on, on Curtis Axel because I like Curtis well, Axel. I mean, it's, it's just because he didn't get, I mean, if you look at it achievement wise, he's done way better than his father. Yeah. He has. Like, the highest um, Mr. Perfect ever got was an IC title ring. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Axel's been tag team champion and he's been U.S. champion. I would give, I think, I and, and I think, you know, no, you know, in comparison, like like Mr. Perfect had had a long feud with Hulk Hogan. He was a, he's, he's a world champion in other territories. He was part of the NWO. He's he had, had matches he had with memorable Flair. feuds. He's part of the Horsemen. So there, there's a big lineage there. Curtis Axel, whether he's like, a giant deal is still regularly featured on Monday Night Raw. Like that is still an accomplishment, whatever you think yeah, of that position. The fact that you're on a Monday night primetime television show about every week for a good period, uh, that's an accomplishment, right? In pro wrestling. So, all right. So, uh, there's a few others. Uh, yeah, Dom- Domino, of course. Um, Usos, been, they were great. Usos doing great. Um, I would yeah, I mean, say... there, there's a lot. There's a lot of people in the Samoan family tree that have surpassed. Yeah, but yeah. there have also been some that have not been great. No. I'm looking at you, Sim Snuka. Mm. There's some. Sim- there's some Anoa fa- uh, family people I know floating around here on the Indies. Uh, mm-hmm. So you know, and, and that, that not that they're not going to do anything. I mean, they're just at that point where they're 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 at that point uh, figuring it out, right? right? So Matt, Matt's calling me out saying that Axel is more accomplished than Mr. Perfect is blasphemy. I'm saying strictly in terms of career achievements. Mm. Strictly in terms of that. That's the only. That is a Look. discussion for another show. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friend at Occupy Pro Wrestling. In the month of May, our, our friends at OccupyProWrestling.com are looking to take a break. Uh, looking, I'm geez. Looking to break its sales records and support a great cause all at the same time. Uh, if they can sell at least five items of merch by the end of May, they'll donate 50% of the proceeds to the Asperger's and Autism Network. And if they sell at least 10 items, they will donate 100% of the proceeds. To get your merch and help support this cause, head over to Occupy Pro Wrestling Shop at whatamaneuver.net. And uh, they're already part of the way towards a goal. So please go over there, pick something up. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Alex, Alex Carr is in the crew over there. Do some fantastic designs for T-shirt. The 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 uh, temple of the uh, the hidden hidden. The, oh, geez, what is the old show? I'm trying to remember the context legends for. of the hidden temple. legends of the Lucha legends Temple the T-shirt oh. that he has is amazing. I just couldn't remember the word order. <laughs> but uh, so go check it out. Support it. And uh, donate to a great cause as part of that and get some cool swag for yourself uh, at OccupyProWrestling.com. What a maneuver.net at the o- Occupy Pro Wrestling store over there. So go check that out. And I already mentioned IndieWrestling.us. Um, there is actually a special bundle going on right now 
where you will get every IWC Night of Legends and Night of the Superstars for a uh, how much was that uh, running at? Was it a, what we're doing at for fifty dollars or forty? Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. That's uh, at least what's uh, is that including their most recent Night of the Superstars? Yep. Uh, so seven Night of the New Superstars and at least five of the other ones. Um, and that includes a lot of those first generation guys that we just talked about, including David San Martino, funny enough. Uh, so go check that out. But of course, Pipers and the Bret Hart's and everything, uh, uh, part of that as well. It's, it's, they've had a lot of, uh, big names over the years with the international wrestling cartel. And, uh, in Memorial day, we remember those heroes, including Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Tough guy. Oh, oh. Uh, so go check that out. And yeah, Virgil's on there a couple times too. Uh, <laughs> Mad Mike and everybody else out there, I want to know what you learned from pro wrestling this week. Who wants to go first? What did you learn? I, I learned that apparently WWE hides a home plate underneath the ring because Titus was safe. Yes. That was good. It's either the best or the worst athletic move ever. And that is something I think we'll debate for years to come. I kind of wanted it to be a slip and slide. He just comes out the other side. Somebody did the slip and slide thing. As oh, a, my as God. A Sork, 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 Sork. We need to do another mashup. Can we find the commercial for Crocodile Mile? Of course we can. Take the audio. Where it says, you run, you slide, you hit the ramp, and take a dive, and put that over the Titus O'Neil thing. Yes, we can do that. Yes. Find Excellent. me the, find me the source on YouTube, and I'll put it together for you, Mike. I'm, I'm going to do it right with the F now. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. i got to do that other thing for you, too. So uh, yes. We swear the WrestleMania uh, video blog is coming out this week. I had to get some pictures from Mike and uh, get those in there so it can be completely complete. And uh, those will be up soon. Hey, and also check out their chat with our friends at the uh, Mania Tailgate Party. Uh, that, that is already on our YouTube and our Facebooks. Um, what about you, Larry? What did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that Ride Along is considerably better with Braun Strowman on it. That's what I learned. It's like a second time on there, isn't it? I should get on the mic. Hi, this is like a second time on. I'm sorry, I'm stretching. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of those people. It was the second time on there. Yeah, I think back so. A lot of them. But it was incredible. Yeah, easily the best part of my Monday night yesterday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I'm including Raw in that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to get through the chat room and I'll get to mine here. Uh, Max. <coughs> oh, 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 Missy, Missy learned <coughs> things. Didn't what, see you all the way back what, there. Yeah, Missy. what are you doing back there? I learned. You learned that Dutters is very tall. Yes. When compared to welterweight wrestlers. <laughs> welterweight's like, well, the weight limit is 185 pounds. And some of those guys weighed in as low as 135. Because they filmed the weigh-ins. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a nice get-to-know people yeah, moment was, for me. It was really great because you'll notice if you've been going through the footage for those interviews. Have not yet. But we, I will. We had her sitting in a chair. Like, there were two chairs sitting there. And we had her sitting while talking to you these guys. specifically talked to the tiniest person there. Yes, we did. Ryan Kidd, wasn't it? Nate Wings. Nate Wings was a small... No, I think it was Ryan Kidd. No, Ryan Kidd was not the smallest Nate, Nate Wings, Wings was. Interesting. But the funniest part was, was that... I can't remember... I cannot remember which one it Sorry, was. Sorry, that noise is him sending me the Crocodile Mile uh, commercial yep. right now. And, the, and, the, and the tide is falling. And the tide is falling, so... I, one of, I got them both for you, Sorg. Yes. Anyways. One of the guys mm-hmm. was chit-chatting with her, and I mean, they're, they're just talking, and then they were talking about their height, and he was actually one of the taller guys in the ring Mm -hmm. and she was like oh well how how tall are you and he told her and she was like oh i'm you know six one and no you're not they stood up and she was a full head taller than he was (laughs) like he came to her shoulders and he was just like whoa (laughs) (laughs) it was amazing missy missy i have a question yes if if you get to go back to another one of these, can we attach a GoPro to the top of Dutter's head and see if she can see any wrestlers? <laughs> Actually, she would not have. She would not have. <laughs> no, nobody was as tall as she was. 
Oh man! Except for Swerve. Oh. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. I felt bad doing ringside camera for the welterweight show. I'm like very conscious, and uh, uh, same thing when when some of the like uh, Zoe Sky, the former Angel Dust, was at Saturday Night Show, and I'm like, all right, like something popped in my head that was like, okay, she's a very very tiny woman, and like it's Alexa like, Bliss size, right? Yeah. And I was like, I need to make her look imposing. So like I so I'm very specific with my camera shots with these guys now. It's like if PB Smooth was the cameraman, he'd be shooting it through the middle rope. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Remember PB Smooth at seven feet tall wanted to be a referee initially. Oh yeah. <laughs> he got shut down pretty quick. I believe this is Ryan Kidd. That's um, Ryan Kidd, yes. Bobby yes. Snyder or Bobby uh Learn that you don't sleep on RC Dupree. Holy crap, you, you do, do not. not. Also, I Dupree. learned, thanks to Bobby F. J. Town, who learned about athletic uh, uh, tape, uh, that, that apparently it works over your clothes. Uh, so, okay. thank you. Thank you, Bobby, for that as well. It's good seeing Bobby F. J. Town up there at the IWC show up at Clearfield. Uh, for all that drive, at least we get to see Bobby and, uh, and everything, too. So, And again, it was a fun show. It's always a fun show up there with those guys. Um, Alex Miller out there on the West Coast. He learned that if the if you put fifteen hockey players in a Royal Rumble in a Rumble match, it's amazing. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the and the NHL still won't suspend anyone. The greatest Royal Rumble got me through my English comp class, says Tina. That's the best. <laughs> uh, Mac Harlan's learned that uh, if you're if you're in pain pills, you can say whatever you want because no one will think you mean it. Um, emoticon shrug and and XE eyes, uh, <laughs> and also by FJ time learned that uh, Chris Larusso wants to drop a piano on me. Yeah, that that came up in that thing. Also, RIP and good riddance to the indie message board. The uh, biggest pit of filth on the internet um, uh, went down this week. Uh, I I almost wish that they did a GoDaddy or, or Geo Cities with it, where it got downloaded. Uh, burnt to a CD simply so we could burn it. Uh, I don't have feelings about this, uh, but uh, <laughs> Lord, why why didn't you get like Chad and Doc Remedy's opinion on the indie message board? <laughs> I think it's on the internet. Tina also learned that her uh, that Alexa Bliss is the same height as Tina's ten year old son. Oh, <laughs> oh boy! And now you know what it would look like if Braun Strowman carried your son into a building. That was weird. That was also, so weird. Technically, I learned, he, he could, technically, he could be Braun's tag team partner, Tina. Also, I learned that that probably the most impo- uh, scariest thing that a Wendy's employee can probably ever see in their life is Braun Strowman coming in and saying that you're, he's missing a small fry. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's scarier was that, than... Was that, a, was that on the ride-along? That was on the ride-along, yeah. Did you not watch oh, it I yet? I need to watch the ride-along. Yeah. You need to I turn that on right now. Go away. <laughs> go go away, Mike. The show's over. Go, t- you go need to- watch Infinity War first. <laughs> you- oh, no. That ride-along will be ten times better than Infinity War. I- yeah. Yeah, I said it. Well, you won't be as sad at the end, I guess. No, I'll, be, I'll probably be sad because I know they won't end up together. Hashtag poop app. <laughs> Hashtag poop app. Hashtag infinity poop app. <laughs> Oh, dear God. Sorg. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Wait, it's been so much. Wait, what, what, wait. What what, what I miss? No. No, what? No. What? Bye, Matt. Did you go through the events that are upcoming? Next and week. Sorg, Sorg, did you talk about what we did on Patreon? I mentioned it, yes, yeah, during the Patreon at the beginning. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. In I the next week, uh, of course, we're going to do a Backlash uh, uh, watch party here. Also, Lee Moriarty is going to be uh, on the show. Uh, which is important because as every time I go to a new promotion and somebody asks, who is that guy? And they're like, oh, that's Lee. He won't be here long. Uh, <laughs> he's that bad? No, no, no. no he's, he's that, that good. good. Oh, okay, good. Also, good. Thrifty's Toddy Tendera. Tendera p- 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 Toddy, uh, from the Thrifty Podcast, who's new to the... New, uh, it's, it's too late. I can't pronounce anything. Uh, new to the network here. We did a Thrifty's uh, Greatest Finds uh, right there on the couch. Uh, where Larry's sitting right now. Oh, that I just spilled stuff. Um, Damn it, Sorg. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so that is happening, and um, uh, uh, he'll be joining us here in a couple of weeks. So uh, looking forward to that. Mad Mike, at Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. I, I, I tweet things. Um, they may be angry things about hockey occasionally, but I do talk about wrestling. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Mutilator Larry. 
Yep. He joined, he started a Twitter. That's not I, Larry. I, I, I do. I have Twitter. I have not opened it yet. Um, but it, it it is on my phone. Fantastic. There is a bird on my phone. There's a bird and on your phone. we will be able to formally roll out with that. I think in the next couple of weeks, right? <laughs> Larry. Yep, I'm hoping. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.